the reality of the blessings of God. I'm convinced of the reality of the word of God over my life. Hallelujah. Look at what he says in bracket. He says, faith is perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. Faith is perceiving as real fact. Ah, yeah. Let me tell you of that story of, um, of one of the ladies whom uh, Smith Wigglesworth prayed for. They, she, she came to service one day and she had goiter, swollen neck, and she, she's, she came and she had believed. And they came, they prayed for her, and she believed she got her healing. And she was so excited and she went. And when she went home, she was excited. Her mother was looking at her. Everybody was looking at her. What are you excited about? Because they still saw the swollen neck. And every one of them made mockery of her. Because it was still there. What they didn't know is that she had the certificate. Anybody, she had the certificate. Yes. My God. They won. The next day, next service. And you know, after the service, she came, back, she, came back, she came for testimony. And she testified. Everybody, yesterday, God healed me. I just want to share my testimony. I'm happy. I'm fine. Everything is fine. The whole church are looking. You know, it's amazing how many people can be in church and don't have faith. Yeah. It's not by being in church or being in church long. You know the story of, the Bible says, Peter, or, um, Acts, the 12th chapter. They were praying. James had been taken and killed. Peter was now the next person. And the Bible said they took Peter and they put him in prison. And the church started praying. Church likes praying. Church folks like praying. They don't like believing. And everybody prayed. I roll on the ground. Until Peter came and knocked at the door. Peter left prison and knocked at the door. And the Bible says a young girl heard his voice. She was excited. She was excited. My God. And she told him, she said, Peter is at the door. Peter is at the door. All the apostles, John, Mary, mother, everybody. It can't be Peter. You see, this is where you will miss it. It is possible to be in church and not have faith. I'm telling you right now. This is why situations don't change for many people. It can't be Peter. Maybe, if, you, see, you see, and spirituality, spiritual jargons will not come into play. Maybe it's his angel. And it's not at that moment you think, oh, like, oh, come on, brother. Angels are here. Angels are here. She, one girl, was the only person who had faith out of several people who were praying. And then she went and opened the door. And there it was Peter. And he came in and greeted them in the flesh. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Be careful that you are not in church but not having faith. You know what the Bible says? When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith on the earth? Don't let faith go scarce. Fill your faith tank again and again. The whole essence of this thing is by faith. Hallelujah. Amen. Faith is perceiving as real. What is revealed, what is not revealed rather to the senses. Hallelujah. Amen. So the next time you're talking to somebody and you're telling the person, you know, this year I'm going to blow. Oh. Amen. You're going to say it well. Because you have the title deed. Hallelujah. Amen. Tell anybody I got the keys. Next verse, please. Verse 2. Verse 2. Verse 2. Are you learning something at all? Yes, sir. Okay. He said, For by faith, trust and holy favor born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. They obtained a good report because the situations they were in were not good. 
And so if I want to change a situation that is not good, if things are messed up, if my expectations are not coming to pass, if, if, if I'm at the level where I shouldn't be, what I need to do now is what? Mix it with faith. Anybody mix it with faith. Hebrews 4 verse 2, we read it the other time. It says, for the same gospel was preached unto us as was unto them. But it did not profit them because they did not mix it with faith. And don't forget they were the church at the wilderness. It's possible to be in church and just be listening. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we encourage you to watch these videos and these messages again and again. Church may be the time for acquaintance. Where you just heard it for the first time and you got excited. When you go home, it's not the time for application. When you look at the message and you are praying it into existence. It's not just by hearing. It's not just by hearing. You can listen to a thousand and, and a dozen messages. And your life may not change. I'm telling you the truth. It is in the working. Tell anybody working. The working of the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Using the sword of the spirit. You're going to receive a testimony. Amen. You're going to receive a testimony. Amen. You're going to receive a testimony. Amen. 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 Verse 3. By faith we understand that the world. Tell anybody the world. All the successive ages were framed. They were called into being. Aya. Do you realize that all the things you see now, were, one time they were, net, they were not existent? Can I preach to somebody like I'm feeling it? Right now you may be sick. Huh? But you can frame your word with the word of God. Tell anybody, frame it. It says, it was fashioned, put in order, and equipped for their intended purpose by the word of God. So that what we see was not made out of things which are visible. Talking about building with invisible materials. I don't need to see 50 bags of cement physically to know that we're about to start a building. Do you know? Do you know that this building you see here today? Once upon a time, was never here. It took a conviction of an architect, or of the builders, to know, okay, we're going to do something here. And the day they made up their mind, all the resources to make it happen started coming. Probably took years, but it was coming. What do you want to build in your life now? Hallelujah. Anything you want to build in your life is buildable. The resources. God is not, is not scarce of resources. Am I talking to somebody? Don't build a small world. Ah, yeah. You may have just $200 now. Don't plan your life with only $200. Hello? Hello? Have faith in his ability to supply exceedingly, abundantly above and beyond. Give room for God to walk. Don't limit him. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, there are invisible blessings. There are blessings that right now we cannot see. Physical eyes. But your spirit can be convinced about. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Hallelujah. Amen. I'm convinced about my future. Am I talking to someone? Yes, I'm convinced about my future. I'm convinced about my future. Hallelujah. 
That's how we got here. Amen. Amen. That's how we got here. If we're anything today, I can tell you for sure, it's been by faith. From the very smallest things, it's been by faith. Faith in the word of God. Faith, not confidence in man or who we knew. We knew nobody. It's been confidence in the word of God. That he who has said it is able to do it. Mark quickly the 11th chapter, 24. Mark 11 verse 24. Mark the 11th chapter, the 24th verse. Is that amplified still? Please give me amplified. Hallelujah. Is this amplified? Amen. It's okay. It's fine. For this reason, I am telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, huh? believe, trust, and be confident that it is what? And you will what? Yes. King James. You know, I, I, I started teaching on this last week, but I couldn't really enter it the way I wanted to because I was limited by the translation, King James. So that's why I'm coming back to it. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, when you pray, believe that what? <coughs> and you shall what? Amen. Now, I have a problem with that amplified. I don't know if that's the correct amplified or whether it's a new one. Uh, do you have English Standard Bible? Please, give English Standard Bible. God bless you. Can we read together, please, at the count of three? One, two, three, go. Believe what? The thing I'm looking for is the past tense of receive. That's what's missing in King James. Faith is not believing that I will receive. Faith is believing I have received. Are you listening to this thing? A lot of people are praying but are not believing. Yeah. Can I take it was in a service one day? And in the service, a certain man, a, a report came of a guy who was in the hospital. And so they all needed to pray. And so they prayed, they prayed, pray, 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 pray for the guy to get better. So just before Kenneth Hagin would come preaching, a certain man of God came on the altar and was like, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Ah, we've prayed today. So how many of us are going to go home to go and pray for our, to pray for our brother again? The whole church lifted up their hands, except the man who asked the question on Kenneth Hagin. Some people love praying, but they never believe. Are you in this church? Yes, sir. When people come to me sometimes, I ask them, okay, so you've been praying. When will you not believe? Because the man of God, remember this is Jesus Christ. Jesus is telling them how he cursed that tree and how it worked. He said, no man eat of you from this day. And the Bible says, they left, they went. The next day, Peter is excited. Hey, Jesus, the tree really died. And Jesus is surprised. I mean, what are you expecting? I spoke it. I created the universe. I spoke it. Yes. And he said, he says, he says, have faith in God. Then it comes to 24th verse. Therefore, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Tell anybody, when you pray, when you pray is the best time to believe. Time. Let me say this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. It is possible to not have faith before, pray, before you start praying. But while you are praying, inside praying, inside the prayer, is where you are supposed to have the faith. Are you with me or you've gone home? I've always said this, those of you in prayer department, you know, I always say, you know, I'd, I'd rather not pray than to pray and not believe. 
I don't, know, I don't mind chewing gum for five, for five hours. Just chew gum. Drink water or something. Clap, dance, or listen to music. Then if the others who do not believe have prayed for five hours, I'll now come and say amen. amen. It's not in a noise. It is faith that makes the difference. Come and know somebody. Jesus is saying, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, when you pray, if you ask it, he said, believe that you have received it. So, 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 if I go on my knees and say, Father, please, I need school fees. I shouldn't get up from my knees. If I said I have faith, now say, I don't know what will happen now. I don't know if they will expel me. I don't know. There's no, where will help come from? You completely negate the essence of your prayer. Am I going to somebody? Yes, sir. It says, when you pray, believe. Do you know, Jesus Christ, before he prays for someone or changes a person's life, he asks a person, do you believe? If you don't believe, go and stay on the line. Next, do you believe? Do you believe? And he's still coming on earth every day today to check people's lives out. When the Son of Man cometh, will he find faith? In services and in meetings, in congregations, in crusades, sometimes you just see somebody coming from outside. From outside, it's not even in the place. Sometimes people are just passing on the street. People in the church are not healed. It's person that is passing on the road who is healed. I just came and suddenly is touched by God. Somebody told me to come and I came. And God touched him because God responds to faith. The Bible says, without faith, it is impossible to what? To please God. Tell me about God is pleased by your faith. Higher. So if there's something in your life you don't like and you want to change, take it to God one more time in prayer. And belief. I can't tell you this enough. Remember, Jesus is saying this is what happened. This is what I did to the tree. When I prayed, I believed that I had received it. I don't know if you're getting me. When I said those words, no man eat of you, I believed it. Peter was waiting to see before he confirmed, but not Jesus. Hello? There's some of you here right now who are waiting to see your life's change before you will be celebrating. Me, I'm already celebrating for you. Amen. Amen. You know why? I already believe. I know there are blessed people in this place. I know you are the answer to the needs of your generation. I know that you will be great men and women. I know that the desires of your heart shall be brought to pass. I'm convinced in my spirit. I have received it. And now what I have to do now is wait to have it. These are two different things. Amplify says, believe that it is granted. You go back to Amplify. Believe that it is already granted. When you pray, believe that it is granted. Not that it will be granted. Faith is not in future tense. Huh? Faith is not what? That is hope. Am I speaking in this church or you've gone home? I'll soon be done. I know maybe you have had too much of faith already today. It is not faith to say I'm going to be fine. It sounds like it, but it's not faith. Someone who does not know faith huh, will think you are in faith. It is not faith that I, I know everything will be fine. I just believe everything will be fine. No, you are not yet in faith. Faith is believing Huh? That I'm fine. You know what God says? He says, let him that is weak. Say what? I, I want you to realize that God is not saying you are not weak. God is not saying you don't feel down. He said, when men shall say there is a casting down, then shall what? 
No, you don't say there is going to be a lifting up. No, no, no. You say there is a lifting up. Yes, and you know what the Bible goes on to say? It says, and then the Lord will come and save the person. Meaning the person was actually down, like others. But in the midst of his downness, amen. amen. That some of you are down right now. Can I say this? I know you are waiting for God, but God is waiting for you. You are waiting for God to move, but God is waiting for you to move. You are waiting for God to do a miracle. You are waiting for God, and God is like, really? You're going to wait long. You're going to wait long. Amen. Amen. You're going to wait long. When you don't know God and when you are so super religious and you don't take time to really humble yourself and study scriptures and know God for yourself, you're going to wait long. You want to wait to get in the mood before you take a step. You're going to wait long. You create the mood. Yes, sir. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. Amen. Yes, sir. Am, I, am I talking to somebody? Yes, you know some folks looking for jobs. Mm. And they wait for long. Yes, sir. You don't wait. You create it. Yes, sir. Oh. Am I talking to somebody? Yes, sir. You don't wait. You create it. Yes, you don't wait. Yes, You're too blessed to be cursed. Papa, am I talking to somebody? So me, I'm too blessed to be cursed. I'm blessed. You're waiting. If God will just heal me, if God will just remove this thing from my life, I'm just going to praise him and give him my all. Better give him your all now. Yes, because sir. if not, it will not happen. You don't blackmail God. Can I speak to somebody? Yes, sir. You're trying to play God. You've seen many of your kind. There's nothing new under the earth. Amen. Amen. You've seen many of your kind. You know, some people try to put God in a corner and give him conditions. Mm -hmm. And God is looking at you. You are not serious. <laughs> I can make stone. I can lift up a stone. Give him your all. Avail yourself. Don't wait to be well before you get up to go to service. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You know, some of you, you have a little pain and you just lie down there like as if the whole world is coming to an end. You think we don't have pain sometimes? Yes. We come with the pain to preach. Yes, the first few three steps, we are there battling. Yes, but by the seventh step, you are not in the mood. Yes, you can't, so me, it's gone and it's gone. It was just a trick. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 By faith, the elders received a good report. Yes, sir. So I believe. Therefore, I receive. Therefore I, receive. I, believe I believe that I receive. Yes. Hallelujah. Because of time, because of time, because of time. Let me rush it. One more scripture and then we're done. Romans, the fourth chapter. Romans, the fourth chapter from the 17th verse. And we're done for today. Praise the Lord. Oh, my God. I don't know about you. Amen. I, you, know, you know, just looking at it, something inside of you jumps. Something screams. Before you even read it, you know, something jumps up. As it is written. I love the fact. I want you to pay close attention to the terms. And the tenses of the spirit of God. I have. Tell anybody I have. I have. Nobody speaks like God. I want you to realize it. God is like. Yeah. You, you are their brain father. Just bless me. And God is like. I have blessed you. Not that I will bless you. I have. Tell anybody I have. I have. Tell anybody I have this thing. For the Bible says, it says, for we have this treasure in earthen vessels. I, the lack of knowledge, what it costs a man. Sometimes the things you are praying for, you already have it. You are looking for it, but you already have it. You are begging for it. And in this world, if you are not smart and if you are not wise, ah, people will play you. Yes, 
they will make you buy what, you, what is your own. It belongs to you, but you will come and pay for it to get it. As I will tell you, no good for yourself. One of my friends in the ministry went to a certain man of God back at home in Africa, a, a prophet, and he came to the prophet and he's there begging, man of God, please pray for me. You know, lay hands on me like, I want to see, I want to see. I open my eyes. I want to see. I want to see. Man of God looked at him. <laughs> and smiled. So let me tell you. You don't need me to lay hands on you. What you are looking for, you already have it. If I were like others now. <laughs> I have not said, you know. What you are looking for, you already have it. Just go now and do this thing. The Bible says that anointing liveth in you. The Holy Spirit. The Bible says in him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Jesus himself. It's inside of you you are looking for. So what are you looking for? He said you are complete in him. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody. Yes, you're complete in him, but you're still looking for something else. You're still looking for somebody who would make you up. Oh. You're carrying Jesus inside of you. You still believe you're not pretty enough. Oh. You're not cute enough. You're not handsome enough. You're not bold enough. You still, you, you, you still have all sorts of things you say about yourself. And God is like... Mm -hmm. I wonder what I died for. <laughs> Amen. God is, God is wondering, what did I die for? Because he died to fix these things in you. For of our own. Oh my God. The Bible says, it's our sufficiency. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. On my own, I ain't pretty. Mm. I ain't handsome. But when the cute Jesus gets in me, hey! Am I talking to somebody? Yes, Amen. He's yes, cuter than the cutest. Yes, talking to somebody in this church. It's cuter than the cutest. The Bible calls him the perfection of beauty. Sweet Jesus. Living inside of you. And you know, you know why it's even more complicated for us? I don't know about somebody here, but, 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 but I'm trapped. I can't go back now. He's not only in me. The Bible says we are in him. And I'm in between. Am I talking to somebody? I'm trapped. Internal beauty you have. External beauty you have. The Bible says in him we live and move and have our being. So when we are moving, it's not just us. I don't have to catwalk to look pretty. Tell me about just Jesus walk. Yes, Jesus walk. Amen. Yes, Am I talking to somebody in this place? Yes, Let Jesus move in you. Yes, the steps of a righteous man are ordered by God. Yes. It is not you therefore who is moving. It is Jesus who walketh in you both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. Yes, yes. Oh, that you'll be conscious of who you are. Mm. Hallelujah. I said, I said, tell me I know who I am. Say I know who I am. I'll never be behind. I'll never be behind. I'll never be left behind. I'll never be at the losing end. All things are working together for my good. Every step I take is ordered of God. Whatever I lay my hands to do prospers. That's who we are. Look at what the Bible says. God, it says, it says, as it is written, I have made you the father of many nations. Yes, when God comes to you and is looking at you right now, and right now you are broke. Oh, you are in debt. You are owing people money. Yes, and God comes and is looking at you. One, mm, mm, just shows up like that. You know, like, yeah, yeah. I'll be blowing whistle. Allow me, just blowing whistle. 